रजिस्ट नाउ Hello my dear children namaste and welcome to the next session of our brand new series in biology biobites in 15 minutes and today we are going to be discussing yet another very very interesting and a very very important topic as far as cbse class 10 students are concerned yes mendel's experiments this is ambika your biology master teacher right here at vedantu well actually uh, had this been a few months ago i would have actually said that this would be equally important for icsc children as well but then fortunately or unfortunately depending on what kind of uh, children they may be uh, the icsc children i mean uh, the chapter genetics is no more in their syllabus so i would honestly say this is mainly for those of you who are in cbse class 10 and for anyone else who wants to learn something new okay so here we go do remember always that what is coming is better than what is gone so let's always remember this and stay positive okay so let me also remind you to visit the link in the description box below and the pinned comment children vedantu pro subscription has got a lot of amazing courses that you can choose from please check out the details uh, right here in the description box below and the pinned comment and remember to apply the coupon code ambpro as well so that you can avail amazing discounts from it okay and let us get started now do remember children for those of you who want to learn this well in detail like the in depth explanation you can go on to our channel's main playlist and uh, just search for um search for it or either go by the playlist or just search for the topics that you want to learn in detail because we've already done that well in detail okay this is just intended for a very quick revision all right so gregor johann mendel we call him the father of genetics right and why so because mendel was the first person to have come up using his uh, you know reasoning methods of reasoning and logic and all of that and the passionate gardener that he was he came up with whatever we know today about genetics and that too in the 1800s back when um, you know a lot of things weren't even known to man right okay so what is it now as you can see in this image here mendel had a beautiful pea garden uh, of course he uh, lived in an austrian uh, monastery and this is a portrait of mendel in his beautiful pea garden so garden pea plant as we commonly call it was the plant that mendel chose for his experiments we call it pisum sativum okay so let me remind you that the botanical name of garden pea plant is pisum sativum All right, and Mendel decided to choose seven pairs of contrasting characters in the pea plant. Ah, uh, for example, stem length, pod shape, seed shape, seed color, flower position, flower color, and pod color. These were the seven different characters, and as you can see, they have got a dominant version of the character, which we call the dominant trait, and a recessive version of the character, which we call the recessive trait. okay dominance and recessiveness dominance dominant is that which is expressed recessive is that which does not get expressed in the presence of a dominant allele okay so as i said everything in detail has been done um in the main uh, uh playlist so check that out in case you have any more queries on that okay so uh, mendel noticed that pea plants could either be tall or dwarf uh they could either have an inflated seed pod or they could have a constricted seed pod uh they could have round seeds or uh, they could have wrinkled seeds and so on okay so mendel was very very curious to know what it was that decided this because back then chromosomes and all of that hadn't been discovered okay so mendel went on to um, study generations and generations of pea plants or pisum sativum and it is said that um, in his 9 uh, or 10 years of all the experiments that he carried out he had studied he had grown approximately 29000 pea plants so imagine how much uh, he would have studied them okay so the hybridization technique was mainly what mendel used um, in order to cross pollinate pea plants according to um, his choices because being a scientist he had to be able to cross pollinate the uh, organism that he was studying so in the pea plant pea plant fortunately is um, a plant which 
normally undergo self pollination but can easily be cross pollinated okay so uh, this is how mendel carried out uh, cross pollination basically by what we call the hybridization technique um, pea plant has got a bisexual flowers um, it's got the female parts and it's got the male parts also in it as you can see the stigma and it's also got the stamen in it right okay so stigma in the sense stigma which is part of what we call this entire part which we call the pistil or the carpel okay and this entire part which we call the stamen so pistil is actually the name given to the female part stamen to the male part and um if at all anyone wants to perform a cross pollination experiment in a flower in a bisexual flower uh, what is done is normally uh, we emasculate the flowers so that is where the uh, technique of removal of anthers comes into picture okay removal of anthers so that pollen from the same flower can be prevented from getting deposited on the same flower's stigma okay which means self pollination can be prevented and cross pollination can be ensured all right so this is about the hybridization technique and then Mendel's first set of experiments is what we call the mono hybrid experiments wherein Mendel studied one character at a time say for example the easiest example that um, most of the time we consider is the example of the character plant height mendel chose one character at a time of course he was not under any pressure of deadlines he had his own time he took his own sweet time to study many many generations so mendel decided to pick a um, homozygous or a pure bred tall plant and cross it to a pure bred dwarf plant okay and he observed that the f1 generation or the first filial generation were all entirely tall okay of course he had no clue about the genotype back then but um, crossing a tall plant and a dwarf plant um, gave him the result that all the progeny were tall because the um the rule was that the rule was that uh, the parents were pure bred either for tallness or pure bred for dwarfness which means homozygous for tallness or homozygous for dwarfness okay so all the f1 generation individuals were tall so mendel decided to allow them to self fertilize this time self pollinate this time and what he now saw was in the f2 generation or the second filial generation he observed both tall and dwarf plants in the ratio of 3 is to 1 3 which expressed the dominant trait which is tallness in this case and 1 which uh, expressed the recessive trait which is dwarfness in this case okay so whichever example mendel uh, took from those seven pairs of characters that we have discussed earlier he got the same result 3 is to 1 3 dominant is to 1 dwarf so do remember always the phenotypic f1 ratio of mono hybrid cross is 3 is to 1 okay whereas the genotypic ratio as you can see here is 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay so that is the genotypic ratio and this is what we call phenotypic ratio all right so once you get the logic of this dihybrid cross is also going to be very very simple for you and the punnett square is what you see here let me write that also for you here punnett square okay which is a tool which is used to logically represent um, and work out different crosses like something like cross multiplication appears like a neat tool basically right so this is what uh, you see here these are the female gametes these are the male gametes and these are the results of the progeny that you can see so once again confirming phenotypic ratio in the mono hybrid cross is 3 is to 1 3 tall is to 1 dwarf and the genotypic ratio is 1 capital t capital t is to 2 capital t small t which is heterozygous and 1 small t small t okay so these two are homozygous tall and homozygous dwarf respectively and this is what we call heterozygous tall okay 
All right, so this is all about Mendel's monohybrid cross. And then Mendel went on to perform dihybrid experiments wherein he chose to study two characters at a time. Okay, so the example we normally give is a combination of seed color and seed shape. Of course, he uh, did a lot of mix and match and uh, studied the inheritance of uh, randomly two different characters at a time out of those seven characters. Okay, right now, the common example, as I said, is seed color and seed shape. So pea plants could either have round seeds or wrinkled seeds, which is seed shape. They could have yellow seeds or green seeds, which is seed color. Okay, so this is how you represent the um, genotype. Okay, of a round yellow purebred individual and a wrinkled green purebred individual. Homozygous dominant and homozygous recessive respectively. And as far as the gametes are concerned, within a gamete, there should always be at least one allele representing each of the characters. At least one R and one Y. Okay, not at least. Actually, it would be just one R and one Y. That's it inside a gamete. But whether it's going to be a combination of a capital R um, and a small y, small r and a capital Y, all of that would depend upon what the genotype of the parent is. So anyway, in these two cases, it's a completely homozygous parent here as well as in here. So there's only one kind of gamete that they would produce, which is going to be capital R, capital Y here and a small r, small y here. And the F1 generation were all observed to have only the dominant trait, as you can see, round and yellow. So this must have been the genotype according to Mendel's logic and based on his experience with monohybrid cross. Okay, so now Mendel decided to once again self-fertilize them, self-pollinate them. So RRYY and another RRYY. Okay, so basically pollen and eggs taken from the same plant okay so now comes the question of the types of gametes these would be the different kinds of gametes produced by these individuals right four different types of gametes here even here it would be the same four different kinds of gametes so obviously four fours are 16. I'm sure all of you mathematics um, lovers would certainly find a lot of logic and meaning in this. This is how you work out the combination of the gametes in a dihybrid cross. Okay, so the phenotypic ratio as you can see is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 children. My sincere suggestion is to just um, not memorize this uh, just like that without any meaning but work out this and see for yourself can be convinced what is nine what is three what is this three and what is this one okay so that you will never forget it for the rest of your life and as far as genotypic ratio is concerned it's going to be very huge one is to two is to one is to two is to four is to two is to one is to two is to one but then normally i'll give you good news that's normally not asked in exams as far as exams are concerned this is what is most important for you okay phenotypic ratio is what is most important for you to know in dihybrid cross okay so this is about Mendel's monohybrid cross and Mendel's dihybrid cross. And based on these observations, Mendel came up with the three laws of inheritance, which we call the law of dominance, uh, which is based on the monohybrid cross. Okay, so I'll write uh, monohybrid here because it's based on the monohybrid cross. Okay, um, law of segregation, which is also based on the monohybrid cross. And based on the dihybrid cross observations, Mendel came up with the law of independent assortment, dihybrid cross. Okay, so according to the law of dominance, of course, um, in the presence of at least one dominant allele, the other one, which we call the recessive allele, is masked, okay, or does not get expressed. This is the law of dominance. According to the law of segregation or the law of purity of gametes, what Mendel says is that um, at the time of gamete formation, the alleles separate out and enter into individual gametes. Okay, two alleles never, two alleles of one single gene never come together inside the same gamete. They separate out at the time of gamete formation, and then law of independent assortment according to which uh, Mendel stated that the inheritance of 
one pair of characters were like uh, the case of dihybrid cross that we saw the inheritance of one pair of characters is independent of the inheritance of the other pair of characters okay this is law of independent assortment okay so these are the three major laws that Mendel came up with and here we go the session in a bite size for you to revise quickly Gregor Johann Mendel is called the father of genetics he used the garden pea plant Pisum sativum to perform his experiments and we know that pea plants are uh, bisexual and they are fast growing and thus they were selected for the study. He selected seven pairs of contrasting characters and bred pure variety of dominant and recessive types. Monohybrid phenotypic ratio was 3 is to 1 and also remember the genotypic ratio which is 1 is to 2 is to 1. And dihybrid, as I told you, phenotypic is what matters as far as your exam is concerned. It's 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. And based on Mendel's monohybrid experiments, he came up with the law of dominance and the law of segregation. And based on dihybrid experiments, Mendel proposed the law of independent assortment. Okay, so there we go. I think once you are pakka with uh, these concepts, you will definitely score very, very well uh, as far as this chapter heredity is concerned. All right, so if you have enjoyed this session and found it useful, do remember to click the like button right now and do remember, do not hesitate to share it because it is literally bite-sized videos that we are giving you. So definitely sharing is caring. So do share it with everyone, all your friends, so that they would also benefit from this. And of course, stay subscribed to our channel Vedantu 9th and 10th English so that you do not miss out on any of our interesting updates. And let me remind you children also do remember to follow me on my official Instagram page which is Ambika underscore Vedantu uh, just uh, because especially because we also come up with a lot of interesting posts which are related to moral stories and things like that. It will be a very quick welcome break for you from your hectic schedule. All right, until we meet again, take care, stay happy and stay safe. And this is Ambika signing off. Bye-bye.